We are efforting one Mike J. Schaefer. The effort has come through. The effort has come through. The man, the myth, the legend, he is back on the airwaves with us. Shafe, how are you this morning? Uh, I'm good. I would like to point out the last time I've done radio with Damon Benning, <laughs> the following hadn't occurred yet. Nebraska volleyball hadn't lost a match. Nebraska basketball hadn't started its season. I'm fairly certain Shelby was pregnant. Uh, <laughs> the football team hadn't had... The stretch of wins in October and then the uh, mind-numbing losses in November. His kid hadn't committed yet. <laughs> that was the last time I had talked yeah. with Damon Benning. And Trev Alberts was still the AD. <laughs> yes, and Trev Alberts was still the athletic director. Shay, yeah, if you Alberts, guys uh, are something else, man. So how how is it, man? It, like, you haven't asked me for any advice, so I assume you're good. <laughs> uh, well... I don't know. I, I feel like whenever you talk with people about, uh, you know, being a first time parent, I think they've just blacked out everything that they experienced because yeah. there's just a lot in there. And I think you remember more of the good uh, than, you know, the sleepless nights, the yeah. fact that randomly your shoulder and arm will just start hurting yeah. because you've carried the same, you know, 11 pound kid on the same side over and over and over, and you realize maybe you need to start using the other side. Yeah. Do you do that the X factor me like about... rule teaches? Do the X factor yeah, in the end zone with the kid? I, I should. I should. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, it's it's been good. It, 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 it has been good. But it's definitely, I, I'm probably not, this is going to surprise people, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm probably not uh, a baby person. You know, as it you know relates I'm, to I'm all things as it as it goes with an infant, but he's uh, he's starting to smile. We got a little bit of a personality shining through, so that's nice. He doesn't just sit there and cry, so that's good. Shafe, <laughs> what you described there is actually an evolutionary trait, because otherwise humanity would have ceased to exist because they'd be like, "This is terrible. We're not having any more kids." <laughs> I feel like some people really like babies. I don't know. No, not. not that part. I mean the like only remembering the good stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. that is no. definitely like an evolutionary trait because otherwise it would just be instant birth control. Yeah, you would just be like, "God no!" <laughs> Everybody would feel like I feel about children. <laughs> So it, it does make you appreciate your parents more, not in the sense that they took care of you, but in the sense that in my case, I'm the third of three, and they're like, Yeah, well, we'll go for another. Let's we'll run it another. back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still traumatized, but I was kind of an afterthought when I was born. So I think that would describe a lot of my issues. Shafe, so like your social media game obviously tapered off, but did your interest in terms of like what you were kind of following or paying attention to i have never been less in tune and there's there's going to be people that'll mock this because i've never felt that i was in tune but i've never been less in tune <laughs> with nebraska recruiting um than these past seven eight weeks i mean I, basically since signing day i shut it all down i mean the only thing nebraska wise i really paid attention to um was basketball and uh Obviously, when the Trev Albert stuff came out. Otherwise, I mean, I had Ooh, really not even, not even baseball. Uh, you know, baseball to the sense that like I would know that they won each day. I yeah. would read the I would read the athletic department email that came in, or not the not our, the Sears is like on all of a sudden Bloomings. Yeah, like no, stay. I don't. I can't tell you who's on the team at a particularly high level with baseball. I this is as checked out as I can get uh, when it comes to Nebraska athletics. And I'm now checking back in, and uh, I've got I've got a lot of work to do to catch back up recruiting wise. Um, but I'll get there. So I I apologize. I probably won't be incredibly specific uh, this week if you have questions as it relates to recruiting. That's you know, shape. That's okay. We just want to talk to you. We yeah, just, just, we just miss you. And it's I don't. And you maybe have mastered this, shape. I I don't. Oklahoma Tyler's a lot like this. Guys that aren't openly kind or super nice or go out of their way to just like this feels like a backhanded compliments coming no this feels like a, a front-facing compliment but, i like this but people like want to be around you like they they kind of grab like people miss mike schaefer and your mo at least especially when you started way back when was you know this guy's never in a good mood He's, uh, a little crotchety but everybody <laughs> everybody look i don't know how you guys do it like it's part of your allure like, how does that happen? They're like cats. The people really want the, them to like them, 
See, that's a backhanded compliment. I don't want to be compared to a cat. I want to be the golden retriever that everybody's like, oh, I like this guy. Yeah, that's that's what I want to be. Has has your cooking game evolved? Like, what's going on with the black? Like, so here's another thing. I I went into parental leave thinking I would accomplish more, and I accomplished absolutely nothing. You can't, like, cook because, believe it or not, this child does not believe in whatever schedule you want. So as soon as you try to make any food, you know, he could be sleeping peacefully. You could have just gotten him down for 15 minutes. But if he senses that you're about to eat some food and try to watch something, he is going to wake up and scream and yell and need to be held. And then your food is either going to get cold or you have to shove it down your throat so fast you don't even taste it. And then you just, you know, at that point, what do I even care what I'm eating? Because I'm not even enjoying it. So, no, I have not been able to, to really kind of cook or do anything um, yeah, but, on that. Yeah, but, it's, I, you know what, I, oh, go ahead. You know what's funny about that? What? I, I always would joke with people where you learn to eat cold food. If you want to learn to eat cold food, have kids. Mm. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it is. You don't, you don't eat it. You're not going to eat anything hot. And wait till like <laughs> they'll start eating real food and then you'll kind of feed and you or you'll kind of eat. And then it's like, yeah, it's cold. I'm just going to. That's where I learned to eat cold eggs. Mm. I mean, to be completely honest, but it, it, there'll, there'll be some good that come that comes out of. Um, you won't That's be nice. near as high maintenance with yourself that you thought you were going to be. You'll you'll soften up. I mean, I've already learned to just walk around in old T-shirts covered and spit up all day. <laughs> so, I mean, I've got I've got that going for me. I wasn't like partic- I never really regarded myself as high maintenance to begin with. But then when you look over and you're like, oh, I wonder if that stains from today or yesterday. <laughs> That's when you realize you've maybe hit the lowest point in terms of hygiene. When exactly? Since you were, the you know, the since beard you is fantastic. The beard's though. in great shape. I mean, the beard hasn't been touched. I don't have time to shave. <laughs> it's time to trim a beard right now. God, it, it, it looks good. It does look trimmed up, though. It looks like it's like shapely. Yeah, it's, it's nice. It's just full. It's full bloom. It's here for spring. So, Shafe, Ravi and I have been fighting about this. Actually, not fighting. Been having very in depth discussions about like quarterback development and what it looks like. And regardless of, uh, let me ask it this way, depending on who wins the job, does our trust that we have right now in coach rule, in your opinion, would it waver? Um, I guess in part, because I think there's the widespread assumption that I share as well, that the job has already sort of been decided. I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to, uh, these are tough words for me to say. I don't want to come off like a jerk here, but <laughs> it's it's Welcome sort of back. hard for me to sit in this seat and with a straight face say, I think that Heinrich Harburg or Daniel Kalen can win the job. Mm-hmm. I mean, barring an injury, it's it's almost impossible for me to imagine UTEP facing anyone other than Dylan Riola with the first snap uh, next, next August. So I guess I would... I would certainly be shocked. I don't know that it would cause an erosion in trust. I think I'd be really intrigued. It would come down to more of a, okay, is there something they can do of Heinrich Harburg that they couldn't do last year? Because that's who I'm assuming would win the job in this scenario. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, is there something they've unlocked? Is there some level to this game that they have found? Have they built an offense in such a way that, you know, they can win? Um, doing this, I, I don't think it would be a trust thing. It would be more of a, what am I not seeing? What am I missing? What isn't here? And um, so I, I don't know that there's a, there's a real trust issue I would have with the quarterback play at this point. Now, if they were doing musical chairs every week, yeah. uh, trying to find the hot hand that I would have a real trust issue because to me, that isn't coaching. That's just trying to stumble into something and get lucky. Shave do you, so let's let's play this scenario out. Let's say Heinrich Harburg trots out there August 31st. So you're saying do you think more fans? I'm asking you to, to climb into the mind of crazy people like me and and try and figure out how fans would feel. Do you think they would think more, oh man, what is Rule doing? What is Satterfield doing? What is Glenn Thomas doing? Or more, oh no, what's wrong with Dylan Rayola in terms of not even an injury, but just as a player? No, I, like, I think your head go first. I, I think initially people would be like, there's got to be an injury. There's got to be something they are telling us. There's got to, you know, go to immediate conspiracy theory 
you know, and then there'd be the, oh, no, is he going to enter the transfer portal? Like, I think there'd be a lot of that. There would be a lot of heightened panic. Um, and then, obviously, the game would start, and you'd have to judge off of what Heinrich Harburg is doing in that game. Uh, but in the initial moment, I think there would be some real, like, I don't want to say soul searching, but I think there would be some real soul searching <laughs> about how much energy people have invested in a uh, freshman quarterback that, you know, wouldn't ultimately end up starting, even though that's the the belief that, again, what are we, 90? Uh, what percentage of people do you think believe Dylan Raiola isn't going to be the starting quarterback? Isn't? Yeah, it's, it's got to be less than 5%, right? Yeah, I, I would I would definitely agree yeah. with that. So, I, I, would, I mean, it's, it's probably less than a percent. That genuinely don't think he will be the starter. Okay. So how about this, Shafe? We've got, we were talking about this yesterday. How about... Um, and he, I have, I haven't been around him in these situations enough to know, but if it is a, a young guy like Dylan and you have a veteran, older experienced linebacking core guys like, like Banks and Fedoni who have been around and kind of, you know, Borkature, um, so a lot of older guys, Ramir Johnson, Gabe Irvin Jr. You see the leadership aspects of leading an older team offensively being a particular kind of burden, or do you think that's just something that naturally evolves as a younger guy that is significantly younger than some of his teammates that he is leading? You know, I think the nice thing is we have examples of this sort of playing out at Nebraska over the last decade plus, whether it's Taylor Martinez, Tommy Armstrong as, as redshirt guys, or most recently with Adrian Martinez uh, as a true freshman. I think, I, I think more often than not, um, the veterans are going to recognize the the talent and what a guy can do for you uh, and then fill in as necessary. I mean, I think that um, the leadership required of a quarterback is always going to be there. He needs to have the command of the huddle. He needs to make people feel confident in what they're doing. But that doesn't mean that a guy like Jamal Banks, who already feels like he's become a pretty large leader on this team, mm -hmm. just based on the conversation I'm hearing, uh, you know, oh, just a, away from practice and everything else. I mean, this is a guy that's having people over to, to his place to, to just get togethers and to hang out and to, to team bonding. Um, I think a guy like that, and especially at a position where Nebraska needs someone to do that, can be really helpful for, a, for a Dylan Riola as he gets his feet wet, both in terms of playing and in terms of having to, you know, be a, uh, a, a quarterback on a new roster where a lot is expected of you, but you've also never played a snap of college football yet. So I, a lot I think of the older guys it makes it easier for I, IGC and and Banks, like you mentioned, and a lot of these guys are in kind of these leadership positions for these teams too. So you can, if you're looking at that as a positive, like a rising tide's going to lift all boats. I mean, maybe you like their leadership, but at some point that transition of There's hey, this is moments, right? hey, this is my offense. Well, can can manifest itself more organically. Yeah, and I think those moments play out on the field, right? Like the first time that he has to lead a critical drive, the first yeah. time that they have a third and, you know, eight, and he makes a, a great step up into the pocket and delivers the ball perfectly. That's I, I, So I, leadership comes in all forms, right? And the guys that can lead vocally, we love in the media because they stand up in front of the podium and they give us the quotes and all of that. But there are a number of guys that you never hear about that lead in the locker room or lead on the field simply because of their play. And if Dylan Riola can step into critical situations, like let's use a Colorado game, for example, and Nebraska needs a drive late in that game to put them away, whether they're either ahead or to just go up ahead. And he's able to calmly take them down the field and do that and, you know, run the plays and put people in the right positions. That's only going to raise his status in the eyes of everyone else as a leader even if it's not necessarily the most vocal thing, it's because you're recognizing that talent that's leading you on the field and leading you to success. And so I think that is probably going to get there quicker than maybe any vocal aspect of, of Dylan Riola with his teammates. We're talking with Mike Schaefer from Husker 24-7. Schaefer, so part of the conversation DB and I were having yesterday were was about what level of leadership you need at the quarterback spot as it relates to how many wins you end up getting. So I asked him basically, hey, if you're 
if your goal is eight or nine wins, and every, I know like coaches want to win every game, whatever, but like realistically, you're like, hey, eight or nine wins would be a really good year for us. Do you need that really good quarterback leadership to get to eight or nine wins, or do you only really need that if you're trying to get over the hump and win a championship? Um, I, I definitely think it can help get to the eight or nine wins. I think that I, I think you can get to eight or nine wins with suspect quarterback play and a revolving door of quarterbacks and, and all of that. We've seen teams do it. Um, but I, I think what you have to have to get to eight or nine wins, and I think we're talking about the same thing, but using different words. I think you got to have trust. And so I think if they have a trust factor in what, you know, whether it's Dylan Riola or the other two guys, if the trust factor is there when he's on the field, if you trust that he's going to put the, the team in the right situation and make the right play in the right moment, that's leadership in a lot of ways too. And so I, I think if that is even at a, at a moderate level, mm-hmm. then Nebraska can still be quite successful. The higher that goes, it seems to be, especially with the way that, you know, the game has evolved and the value of the quarterback position, the higher that can get and the more trust that you have in your quarterback, usually, the more success on the field that follows. Shave, how come, so we're kind of weird, and I, I didn't, we didn't really arrive at a good answer, but the critiquing of the quarterback and who wins the job and who doesn't always seems to be like this grand indictment either way, right? He's not very good or, ooh, you know, what's going on? But we don't really, so, so we're just like, in, we're inserting like wide receivers. Ooh, Banks, you know, he's, he's, a, he's an older big body or, um, we wouldn't do that, and we don't say, "Gosh, what's wrong? What's with the development of like Jalen Lloyd and and Doss and Coleman and these guys?" Or if, um, you know, uh, Gabe Irvin Jr. wins a running back spot, we don't necessarily look at that as an indictment of Dowdell. We we just we look at the we look at how quarterbacks are critiqued and what happens with the depth chart more of us as an absolute than we do with almost any other position on the field. Why do you think that's different? I think because situations like what Kansas has is rare, where it's rare to get a Jaden Daniels and a Jason Bean, and it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's not Jaden Daniels. What is his name? Jay- Whatever. Jalen Daniels. Jay- yeah. Um, and, and to have, you know, the same team basically come out of it, regardless of which one's playing. I think because there's usually a clear delineation between your top guy and your second guy, and you see that play out time and time again. Um, it's hard for us to, I think, whether you're evaluating it critically, whether you're a fan, it's just hard to think that the drop off won't be somewhat substantial at that position because it's just ingrained in our brain how mm. valuable that position is. And you just assume more often than not, the coaching staff who has all of this information and watches the practices and the plays and sees what these guys are like behind the scenes is going able to is going to correctly assess who can step into those situations and be the guy. And you always want your quarterback to be the guy. Like nobody is ever asking for their quarterback to just be a game manager unless they realize that the rest of their team is built in such a way and they feel like they're deficient. But in everyone's heart, you want your quarterback to be your best player. And so because of that, the expectation is they need to shine brightly over those behind them. And sometimes to do that, you build it up by tearing the other ones down. It's a weird, it's everything we do with quarterbacks, how we discuss them, how we talk about them is so different than any other position in sport. It's so different than any other position in football. And, um, you know, it's it's really hard to separate and to stop doing that. I just say it's weird, though, and I'm listening and I kind of alluded to this yesterday, but that gives me more context Mm -hmm. to say when you have an offensive line that's going to have more starts than any team in the in their conference combined it's okay to say your quarterback doesn't have to be great because I I, at least I think so because I'll always take a great offensive line over a great quarterback every day that ends in Y so maybe we got to do some reshaping yeah the the problem with that is when you get into the fourth quarter situation and you need, need that big drive your head is not thinking, well, they've got a good offensive line. It'll be fine here. Your head is thinking, can this guy make that throw? Can this guy get out of pressure? Can this guy put them in positions to make success? When we talk about fourth quarter comebacks, we're not talking about the tight end throwing a hell of a block and then releasing into the flats and getting wide open. 
We're not talking about the running back picking up the critical blitz. We're always talking about does the quarterback make the play? Mm -hmm. Like every single time you get into that crunch time situation, the other 10 guys on the field become nameless and faceless unless they catch the game winning touchdown, unless they're Amir Abdullah and on fourth and 11, they get the little outlet and they're able to turn that into a first down against, you know, uh, Northwestern. Like there's, we only want to talk about the other 10 when they score, or have the big critical play, but it's not like you go into that moment. And you're like, all right, well, the offensive line is good. The, the receivers are good. They'll be fine. The quarterback just has to do what he does. So no, you think that he coach, has to be superhuman. Can the coach have the conversations, though, where he's talking about surrounding casts and needing to get better across the board? If, if Nebraska can have elite-level special teams and elite-level defense, that certainly gives you a lot more leeway to yeah. – to for your quarterback to develop, and I think he can say those kinds of things without being disparaging about the quarterback position. What I, if it's I how think that's we, all true? What if it's how we receive the information? We we could probably be better in that regard. Well, yeah, but do you expect us to be better? Yeah, yeah that Robbie, he, looks at, he looks at me. I would say, that's a nerve for DB. It that's is, a nerve. It uh, yes. <laughs> So Shafe, we, you guys are the same. No, so Shafe, let me let me give context here, right? So we constantly have this battle about DB trying to urge people to be better, which I appreciate, versus me saying <laughs> the history of how people act is leading me to believe this, right? I would love them to be better, but I don't have a lot of trust when they've been acting like this for however long, right? We were talking about it with the committee when we were arguing about Nebraska's road wins or not. We were talking about it with the with the Voting. committee with um player of the year where we would seed we were talking about voting with player of the year like there's there's and and brunts brunts actually doubled down on it too and he was he used the term lazy he's like well you know sometimes voters or people that are actually assessing it are they're just lazy and i'm like well because we don't hold anybody accountable we just say oh that's the way they are so we just go on about our way but if i'm I predicting something i have to go based on the history of how people are yeah, if you watch, you definitely won't parent like that. I guarantee. <laughs> no, I way. don't know how I'm gonna parent. I just hope to get up every day and survive. Survive in advance. I'm NC State as a parent. That's where I am right now. <laughs> That's gonna stick. Get your DJ Burns game right. Um, Shave five in advance. We appreciate it. Welcome back. Uh, congrats on the child, and uh, it's great to see you. Oh, uh, bring a smile to my face. Best in the business. Thanks, Shave. See you guys.